What's up, YouTube? Uh, today I'm doing a little work on the uh, Ram 3500. It's a 2021 model. Um, I've got a bulk tank in the back that I just recently put in there not too long ago, and I never actually wired it up. So I actually want to take advantage of the pre-wired harness inside the cab with the auxiliary switches. I want to go ahead and get those auxiliary switches uh, activated to turn the bulk tank on um, so that I don't have to plug it into my seven pin connector in the back whenever I want to power it up. Um, to do that, I did, I did a little research on YouTube. I couldn't find anybody that, you know, you just watched the video and he showed you how to do it, um, the correct way. Um, pretty anal about my wiring and stuff, um, being I'm in the electrical field. So I went ahead and I busted out the owner's manual. And if you get your owner manual on, uh, like I said, this is a 2021 model. So there's other models that this falls under, but, um, on page 175, um, you'll find auxiliary switches if equipped. In that, when you read that, it actually gives you a website called, you want to go to rambodybuilder.com, www.rambodybuilder.com. And when you do that, you're going to pull up a website, looks kind of like this. And through this, you'll come up to this. If you scroll down, electrical wiring information, auxiliary switches right there. Click on that. And then you want to click open, open document. What that's going to do is going to pull up all this information. This is going to tell you everything you need to know about how to do this. Now, one of the videos I did watch on YouTube, and not knocking this guy at all, um, before we get into this, these connectors here on my vehicle. All you have to do is splice a wire into there, and you've got power to whatever device. As soon as you push your button, it fires it up, right? Well, what he had done is he had taken a wire out of that into a separate relay and then ran that to his device he was powering. You don't have to do that. From everything that I'm understanding from research-wise, from reading all the stuff on this RAM website, all that's all done for you. All you have to do is decide which port it is that you need to tap in. Now, why are these ports different? Here's why. If you do the reading, it comes down to here. My bolt tank that I am installing came with a wiring harness that has a 25-amp fuse in it, right? So what I found here is auxiliary four supplies a 25 amp fuse. So obviously that's the one I want to use. Now it's got other 40 amps, 20 amps. I obviously probably don't want to use the 20 amp. The 40 amp would probably work, but I don't want to burn anything up. So we're going to use that 25 amp one there. Now it's telling me it's auxiliary four, right? Scroll down. Here it is. It lists everything, which one I need to plug into. So this bottom right one, number four, auxiliary four relay. Okay. So that's the one I'm going to be using on my vehicle to power my bulk tank because that has the, the correct amount of amperage that I'm needing according to the, what they sent me with the bulk tank. Um, depending on whatever you're doing, you know, LED lights or whatever, there's other options. Um, some of these, I mean, 40 amps, that's, that's a lot. That'll power quite a bit, you know, an air compressor or something. So um, you're going to want to just maybe probably pop this website up whenever you go to do this. If you have any questions on which one you need to uh, feed into, like I said, I'm going to use the number four. It's a 25 amp. Um, so basically, like I was saying though, Ram has already went through and they've already relayed, they've already fused what's there. So that's my fuse. There's my relay. So it's all there. All I have to do is connect my power wire to my bulk tank to that plug-in right there and then ground the other side, obviously, and everything like that. So it's going to be a real simple, real simple install. Um, like I said, you don't have to do all this. I found all this information in my, my owner's manual in my vehicle, pulled that out, and then it you know, brought this up. So if you have any questions, like I said, rambodybuilder.com. Um, I didn't even know this site it existed. So this is my first time using it, and it's, it's done nothing but open a bunch of doors for me as far as the wire is. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go over there, show you what I got going on, and uh, we'll get this thing wired up and uh, show you how it works. So let's do it. All right, guys. I know I just did an intro, what we're about to do, but one quick thing you need to know before you proceed with the process that I'm about to do, you're going to need one of these. You're going to need a spade connector. Um, I've already done this process, so out of everything you're going to need, this is the one thing you're going to need. You can twist the wires together as far as for connections and stuff like that. You can do whatever you want to do. Do it how you want to do it, or you can do it how I do it in the video here in the future. But one thing you're going to need, you're going to need the spade connector in order to plug in to that box that's already pre-wired in the vehicle. So I'll just let you know that now. So you might want to hit the pause button, go out and get one. Um, it doesn't have to be a yellow one. It just depends on what wire size you use. But long story short, you are going to need a spade connector. So keep that in mind. Um, but enjoy the video. All right, guys, here we go. 
So got the hood open. Um, I've already removed this, but here, right here's the box with the fuses in it and the relays. So like I said, you got a screwdriver. Here's your relays, here's your fuses. Um, right here is where we're gonna be connecting those wires. Let me see if I can get in there. So right in there where those green little rubber things are, see those rubber grommets in there? We're gonna be connecting, I'm doing this through my camera. We're gonna be connecting to, I believe this one here, and I'll know more as I unclip it off here and pull it off, but there's two here. So there's two ports that you can actually use to power up whatever device you're trying to power up. Um, we're going to be using the, I think it said the dark gray number four, which was, I think that, oh, that bottom one right there. So anyway, so what I'm going to end up doing is come over here. So here's my bulk tank set up. Currently, don't make fun of it. There's a lot of guys that do this, but I usually have the bulk tank. I used to have it on my trailer, my equipment trailer, and just left it on there. And what I would do is when I just pull up to the trailer and plug this into my truck or, you know, whatever, so that I could get power for it. Um, it's just a two wire, you know, positive and negative. And that's how I, that's how I power my bulk tank as of right now. Cause I wasn't sure if I was leaving it in here or not, but I'm pretty sure it's staying now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that off. We're going to run the wire along the frame rail there, tuck it up nice and neat. We're going to plug one of them, one end in, like I said, into that connector. And then the other end we're going to ground, which there's a nice ground spot right there. Um, one of these is labeled ground in there. I contemplated plugging that other one in there, but I just don't want to, I don't know if I want to do that. So I think it looked nice and clean. Hopefully I got enough wire on that harness already just to go to one of these body bolts. Um, give it a nice good ground and I'll go from there. You guys probably see this here. This I believe is for, I think this truck came with a prep package for the snowplow group. Um, I believe that's what that's for, for like your headlights, turn light, uh, headlights, turn signals, that kind of stuff. So you may or may not have that, um, but I'm not going to worry about that there. So just ignore that. But uh, we actually don't need in here. So we'll go ahead and put the cap on. I just wanted to show it to you, highlight it to you. So um, jumping in the cab real quick. I'm not sure which switch it is. It's very dark in here. I need to change those LEDs. But hopefully it's like number four or something. But as you can see and why I got you here, so the key is not on. I do not have the key on. But if you watch, some of these switches already have key power, right? So I actually want to try and, but you can reprogram it on the dash there. Um, I want to actually use that feature. That way I don't have to have the vehicle on to turn the, the pump on. You don't have to jump in here, find my keys, whatever. So I can just hit that and the, uh, the bulk tank comes on. I fill my machine and then I can turn it on. So... That's the plan. So we'll go ahead and program. If it is that one, number four, I'm guessing it is. If it's that one, we'll go ahead and program on the dash. I'll show you how to do that to get that to come on with key power because right now it doesn't. So if you just watch, turn the key on. Still doesn't do it. Okay, so this is a learning experience for me too. Let's hop in real quick. I would imagine that the truck's gotta be running. So let's check. Yep, so the truck's gotta be running for these other ones which they all work when the truck's running. Not a big deal. So these two are key power. This one's not, like I said, should be just settings on there. We can change up and uh, get it going. So a hey, real quick update. So remember I, early in the video, just a second ago, I hit that and these weren't coming on. Push it one more time, hit it to run and they come on. So it, even though it says accessory, they don't come on. You got to hit it to run to get them to come on. All right, so I've ran the wiring from over there. Through here, coming up, going down through the bed. Again, you don't have to fall exactly the way I did it. That's how I did it. So it's gonna run straight down there. So there it goes. This is a nice, good, thick coating. So it runs up through there, up behind there where you see it turns the red where I put the new coating over the wiring. So as you can see, it's up out of the way. It comes up right there. All right, so what happened here is uh, the wiring wasn't long enough that came with the bulk tank, so I had to cut it and splice it. Um, so I'm using that red hose there to go over the wiring that I'm using to extend it, um, just to kind of as a protective shield. So you're going to go ahead and see me uh, cut, splice, solder, all that kind of good stuff um, right here, right now. So enjoy.
right guys quick little update for you as you can see i got my wires up in there it's right back there um do my negative wire it's going to be right here on this bolt and then the positive wire is actually going to ride around here and then i undid this plug this cap and as you can see on this cap it went in like that this one's my number four you're just going to pull that plug out of there and do it one-handed once you pull that plug out of there, you no longer need that plug. And that's where your wire is going to go. If you see in there, I'll try and get you in there. It's like a spade connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spade connector. I'm going to connect it onto my wire. I'm going to solder it all on there and everything. And then we're going to slide that up in there. And I'll keep in mind, you can kind of see it. See how it's flat? Going vertical up and down. Make sure you don't put it in there horizontally and shove it in there because if you do that you're probably going to break all that stuff in there okay so let's make sure we uh we put it in the right way and we don't force it so and then once i get the wire in there with the spade connector in there i'll go ahead and put some uh i've got a uh, dielectric grease i'll just fill that with to keep moisture out of there because um, that's what those plugs are for and then once that's done this will just plug in there hook up my ground and we'll go test it out all right so Got my spade connector on there. Got it all soldered up. Good focus. Um, little piece of heat shrink on there. So now I'm going to slide that on this cap and then uh, plug it in. One thing I want to note, um, you can use just a crimp on spade connector, which is actually what that is. I just soldered in it, fill it full of solder and then put heat shrink on it just to uh, make it an even better connector. And guys, don't let the way I'm making my terminations and everything um, scare you from just using a crimp connector or anything that stuff's kind of fine you know for for lights or whatever the only the problem with that kind of stuff is is, is the connections you know they get weak after time over time um, this kind of connection is pretty solid and it should last the, the life of the truck that's the idea behind it so um, don't let it don't let it freak you out if I'm doing stuff like this and you're doing it differently that has nothing to do with that's not what this video is about this video is really just to show you where how to write route your wiring and where to plug into stuff that way you can uh, hook up your accessories like I am um, so don't don't let stuff like this freak you out. Um, this is all stuff you can do in your mom and dad's garage, your garage, whatever, your buddy's garage. This is stuff you can do in your driveway. Um, this is not something that needs to go to the dealership to do. So keep that in mind. All right, guys, I got my connector in there, my spade connector in there. I pushed it in as far as I could get it. I will say that I did have to trim off some of the heat shrink that I had in there. I kept shoving it in there, and it wasn't making this little click noise I was look looking for. I uh, pulled it out, saw that the heat shrink was getting caught up, so I trimmed that back a little bit. And was able to get that in there um, as far as I could get it. And I'm comfortable with it. Um, I do need to probably bend it down just a bump. There we go. Um, but it's in there. It ain't coming out. Like I said, I'm going to fill that full of uh, some of this here. I got this dielectric grease. You get this Home Depot or auto parts store or whatever. Um, and just keep moisture and uh, dirt and whatnot out of there. So I'll go ahead and get this all tidied up. And then uh, we'll get in the truck start messing with the settings. So... Got the wire plugged into the connector. Um, got it zip tied there. We got my ground hooked up to these other grounds here. Um, soldered, all that stuff. Runs down there. It's all nice and neat. All looks factory. Doesn't look like a bunch of crap laying around. So the moment we've been waiting for, go ahead, get in the truck. Key is off. As you can see, these still come on. I can reprogram that, but Anyways, it should be number four. Not working. Go to run. Number four. Should be able to hear the pump. As you can hear, it is coming on. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and mess with some settings in here. We're going to put the vehicle to run. We're going to go over here. We're gonna go to, go. you wanna go down until you find, press enter for commercial settings. You're gonna press over for enter. And the pin from the factory, if you can see that, it should be all zeros, I believe. Yep, it's all zeros. Okay, so we're in. Auxiliary switches, pin setup. Well, there's only two options, so we'll go auxiliary switches. Sorry for the beeping. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna go over to number four, which we know is the one we want. Select it. It type power source. Um, so let's let's just go type first change it to momentary okay settings saved let's go ahead and see what that did 
Okay, so as you see, I push it, it doesn't stay on. You got to hold it probably. Okay, so only that, that's going to work is if you hold it. So that'd be good for like a horn or something. So we don't want that. So that's what that, if you were wondering. So we'll put it back to latching because that's what we're going to want. All right, let's go back. Power source. Now, I don't want to have to get in and push the vehicle. I don't want to have to get in and turn the vehicle on and all that. So, like, so we'll go ahead and put that on battery. Select battery. Saved. Okay, in order to do that, I'll have to turn that back off. So let's just go back real quick. So back, back, back. All right, we're going to turn the vehicle off. Now, auxiliary four should come on without turning the battery on. And it does, and it stays on. It's not on a momentary. So, all right. So that's working. All right, so there you have it. Um, that's how you want to wire up your auxiliary switches. Uh, going to be a quick, easy, short video on how to do it www.rambodybuilders.com. It's in the owner's manual. If you have your owner's manual, which most people do, if you have your owner's manual, a lot of the stuff is covered in there, but this website here goes over everything. It, it, the whole wiring schematic and everything's on there. Um, it won't give you a step-by-step -step process on how to do that. That's why I made this video, but it will show you where you where you want to plug in the stuff. Um, these trucks are pre-wired for almost everything for the most part. There's a few things that they don't put on from the factory, but for the most part, there's a lot of stuff on here that I didn't realize is already on the vehicle that you don't have to run harnesses to. A lot of it's already pretty much there. You just have to find it, and this will help you do it. So, as far as a process on this, um, don't you know? Don't click out of this video yet. Let me explain a few things. There's nothing in this process that, as far as specialized tools that you need, um, everything I had that I did is all stuff that anybody should have in their garage, whether you work on cars or not. Um, it doesn't matter. This stuff, this was, this is very simple. You do not have to do it the exact way I did it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with just hooking up to the battery, putting a fuse, and then running the switch inside the cab. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with any of this stuff. I'm not saying that. But these, these vehicles nowadays, um, they're, they're coming. They, they understand. The man, manufacturer understands that a lot of people are putting accessories on these work trucks, for example. So they're, they're putting them on there already, and you know, it's just a, just a push button. Um, like I said, there wasn't a lot of information out there on how to do it. So I just went ahead and made a video on how to do it. Um, very simple process, like I said. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, anything, anything you want to see me do on the vehicle that you're you don't understand how to do, or whatever, I don't have a you know, drop a comment down below. I mean, I'll get back to you, whatever. Um, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I know it doesn't sound like much just to hit a like button, but it really helps the channel out. Really helps the views. Really helps me get more input. You know, shows me what you guys are in into or not. This video took about an hour to make. Um, you know, that was an hour I could have spent doing something else. But being I, I saw the need for it, I went ahead and made it. So, like I said, if you guys could please like, like and subscribe to the channel and the video, um, that would be a huge help. But anyways, if you guys got any more questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, until next time, we'll see you later.